this week on Jared's Guide Outdoors, we're out here to Chesterfield Reservoir. Now this this is you know quite a popular fishery, but I have not been here for oh, I bet six or seven years. It's been a long time. So we finally decided it's time to come back out, show Kate what Chesterfield is all about, and uh, see if we can catch some fish. Chesterfield is known for some pretty good sized fish. There's you know just your average little guys, but there's also some pretty big five pound kind of fish. So we're hoping, of course, to get some of those big ones. We're hoping to just catch fish. We're hoping to just have a good time. Let's get after it. Welcome to Jared Scott Outdoors, your source in the field for local outdoor news. Unlike most trips, we didn't get to Chesterfield at first light. To be honest, I hadn't heard of any early morning bite, and so we didn't bust our rear ends to get there too early. And judging from all the other fishermen showing up at the same time as us, most other fishermen weren't in a big hurry either. All right, so we are heading from the parking lot across to the other side for no other reason than to go to the other side. It's been so many years since I've been here that I really have no idea where the fish are. We might be doing the wrong thing because everybody is close to the parking lot, but people st tend to stay close for no reason, I think, in particular as well. So anyways, we're gonna try this on the far side of the lake and See what happens. Out of all my kids, only my oldest, Nathan, and my youngest, Cade, could come, or in some cases wanted to brave the cold. But the three of us were sure to have some fun. All right, the bad thing about walking so far is that if you forget the bait, you have to walk all the way back. And that's what Nate's doing right now. Dang it. <laughs> of course, first things first. While Nathan went to get the bait, I started drilling holes. The ice was plenty thick, so no worries there. We were close to shore, but didn't know where the fish would be. So I drilled several holes from shallow to 50 yards offshore. We had about 10 poles we could use, so we'd make sure to get them all in in hopes of finding out where the fish were. Well, there's definitely plenty of ice here. We've probably got a foot or so of the slushy kind of ice, and then ice underneath that. So. We got a long ways to go to get through this, but there's plenty of ice to be safe out here. The lake is obviously rising, and uh, and so there is slush on top in certain places. So if you come out, you'll want to bring boots that are waterproof as well, not just snowproof. But we've got a few more holes to dig and get some poles in the water after Nathan gets back with the bait. <laughs> after I got all the holes drilled and the chair set up to start rigging poles, Nathan finally made it back. If it was solid ice, it would have been one thing, but since he was post-holing through the slush, it made it that much harder. All right, so Nathan and I, Nathan's back <laughs> from getting our bait. So Cade's been clearing out our the holes and Nathan and I are getting the poles rigged up, but we're kind of, we've got a line set up from shallow, as shallow as three feet deep of water to seven feet. And, and we got two lines and we're just gonna kind of test it as we go and we'll move according to where we get the most bites. But as far as what we're using, we're using millworms, night crawlers, some sucker meat, and on, on different colored jigs. So really just a variety of stuff that we're gonna try today. And, uh, and then if we notice a pattern, we'll kind of hone down on it. But the, the word I got from somebody who was here a few days ago is it seemed like they were kind of biting everything. So we brought a little everything. It was a nice day for fishing. Not too cold, not too windy. Just a nice day. As nice as it was, the fish were not biting. All the lines were in the water spread out from shallow to those deeper spots. We each sat next to one and jigged it, but that didn't seem to matter. We just couldn't generate any activity. Well, so far we've been out here about a half hour or so with all the poles in, just, 
just waiting at least half hour and we have not gotten a nibble so we are hoping this is not a sign of what today is going to be like we didn't get out here at first light we got here about oh about nine o'clock um, anyways so we're hoping things improve after a lot of patience Cade finally got a hit he got excited but after a few taps it was gone then Nathan had the same thing happen. He got a few taps and got ready to set the hook, but then nothing. Jigging it to attract the fish back didn't seem to work either. A little while later, Kate got some nibbles again, but as before, the fish was gone nearly as quickly as it came. At least we were getting some action, but we sure hoped we could actually get some hooks set. Oh, he's back. Wouldn't you know it, but when we got a hit on one of our cheap little kids' poles, we got that hook set. Finally, our first fish. Cade was right there, and so he was more than happy to bring it in. Fish on! There you go. He's big. <laughs> that's a nice fish. He's a big fun. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice fish. All right, so after a few hours, we finally caught the first fish. It's a pretty rainbow trout. That was a good fish probably around three pounds. So for the first and Are only fish on the ice, ice, not bad at all. Hot, cold. <laughs> well, as you saw, that uh, was our first fish. And yeah, about two hours after having the poles in the water, we probably had a half a dozen misses in the last 15, 20 minutes. So there was kind of a pickup of bites, but it's really light. It's just kind of tap, tap, and they're gone. Tap, tap, and they're gone. They're not hanging around. So we we finally kind of just said, all right, if you get some bites, just set the hook. Don't mess with them, just get that set. And uh, got that one set. So pretty fish, beautiful fish, got it back in. Hopefully, it's about noon now. So hopefully that means we'll have a little bit of a bite picking up. All right, so it's probably been about 10, 15 minutes since Kate got that one. And I got another one. I, I was sitting here jigging it. The other ones have actually been on when we haven't been jigging it, but I was sitting here jigging this. He's a pretty fish. I set it down to go fix another pole that looked like something. It just wasn't sitting right. I turned around and my pole was bouncing. Nope. <laughs> Got it. The hook came out just as we brought it up. <laughs> that was on a worm and a jig. So there you are, not nearly as big as Cade's, but still a pretty fish. It's probably about a 16 inch rainbow. Just a nice fish, just a nice fish. So that was, that was two points right there. It went right down the hole. <laughs> so we're gonna let that guy go. Um, <laughs> but we did get it on camera, so it did happen. But anyways, you know, it's still just a little afternoon now, so things are picking up a little bit for the bite, which is a good thing. You always like it when the bite isn't first thing in the morning like Henry's Lake likes to be. So you can come out here and fish all day and not feel like you have to be here right at first light. It just makes it a little more enjoyable. But anyways, we'll keep at it. We got Nathan down there who's, he's always been my kid that's the most patient and always just works the hardest to get a fish and just wait and wait and seems to have the worst luck. So. We're going to see what he can do now, but anyways, good times. Sure enough, it was Nathan that hooked up next. Of course, it was the furthest pole out there where Nathan was, and it came in so quick he couldn't reel fast enough. It ended up tangling a little in the fish finder, so Cade got that out of the way. Nathan is on the board. <laughs> I'm still winning, though. Start swimming up and I couldn't real quick enough. My first fish of the day, it's the third fish in the group. It's just the smallest guy now, but still a fish. So this was a worm, mine was a worm. Mine was a worm. Okay. You saw Nathan caught him a fish. I literally just turned the camera off from my fish and he held fish on. So by the time we got there, he had it at the top of the hole, but there you go, he's on the board. We've all caught a fish now and still got some more time to go. Well, as I mentioned earlier today, with all our poles, we were using uh, mill worms 
and sucker meat and then just your regular earthworms and and uh, so far all three fish have been caught just using worms so I'm just kind of breaking them in about a third and hanging it off that so there's not too much worm hanging off um, and then we're using different jigs so far uh, most of the action has been on our bigger jigs actually we've got skirts on them but it's been the big ones that surprised me I thought they were kind of a little too big but it's our big ones that are getting the most action uh, however the one I caught was on just a little little uh, less than a quarter ounce one but anyways worms seems to be the best right now Cade was determined to drill a hole himself the auger was nearly as big as he was so he couldn't get a lot of leverage Nate and I just chuckled while we watched him struggle to get that hole drilled but in the end he got it done and was pretty proud of himself of course, after getting the hole drilled, he moved a pole in his chair over there, sure that it would be the spot. All right, so this was the first one that actually hit while I was jigging. Kind of surprised me because it was just, I was watching Kate over there trying to drill a hole and suddenly started jerking. Feels like a pretty good fish. A little more fight than the last ones, but... <laughs> Doesn't want to come up. Man, he's sliding. Yeah, he's... A little more feisty. came off again and I could not get a hold of that one. Dang it. <laughs> it looked like it was about as big as the first one I caught. Just had a little more oomph to him, but that was a white jig with a with a worm again, but dang it. You always like getting them out. I don't know why, but get it back in. When another pole started getting a hit, Nathan ran over to set it. It's there, set it. <laughs> Just real tight. Is it there? <laughs> As you can see, that set didn't work out. Turned out the drag was completely off. The drag's all screwed up. So I went to set it and realized that the drag wasn't even working. Like there was nothing there when I went to set it, so we lost the fish. The bite stayed pretty steady, not super hot, but steady. We still had that problem of missing more bites than we got, just like the one Nathan just missed, but every now and then, we'd get a hook set. That's a really pretty fish. Nathan hooked that one all right, but he was sure getting all the small ones today. What? What in the world? <laughs> it's like doing a belly roll. <laughs> Those are beautiful colors on it though. That is a rainbow for a reason. All right, here's my second fish of the day. We kind of had a slow moment where we couldn't set any hooks. We were kept getting bites, but we finally made a count. And this one's a... It's a really pretty color on the, the this fish, but it's fun being out here. It was a nice day, but still cold enough that the water in the holes was freezing over pretty quick. So about every five minutes, one of us would make the rounds, clearing the ice and giving the lines a few jigs. It's funny how regardless of how cold it is ice fishing or how good the bite is, my kids always end up playing around, having a good time. It happens Somebody every time we go out. Just another example that you don't have to fill a tag or limit out every time. Just get your kids outside and they'll make it all work out. The name of the game here just, you know, just seems to be patience. You know, on Henry's, as we've mentioned before, there's, there's definitely a morning bite and, and whatnot, but here it just seems to be kind of sporadic just all day long. There, there hasn't been a time that's better than another other than just a flurry of a few bites. And then we'll have 20 minutes of absolutely nothing. And then you'll get another bite and then nothing. 
and it seems to be kind of random on wear as well so really it's just about just hanging out and uh, being patient and giving it some time and every now and then you get those bites we've got a couple good ones some small ones we just missed a, a really heavy feeling one so uh, that's kind of the thing it's what what we've noticed here at Chesterfield anyways looks like you can come anytime during the day you just got to have some time However, another pole at the far end of the line where Nathan had been fishing started bouncing and Nate took off running. <laughs> Nathan, you got the small ones figured out. I don't know if it's coincidence, but all three fish Nathan caught further out from shore were small ones. The ones we caught in closer and in slightly shallower water were the bigger ones. Again, maybe it's just coincidence, but something to think about. All right, another small one, even smaller than the last. Out here at Chesterfield, the rules are pretty much the same as in anywhere else. You can have five poles per person and use whatever bait you want. Um, but instead of six trout, you can only keep two. While we were having some more occasional misses, it did slow up a little bit more than normal. And so with commitments at home that we needed to be back for, we started packing up. However, while Nathan and I packed, Cade waited till the last possible moment with his spot. In fact, as he finally gave up and reeled in his line, he reeled very slowly. And wouldn't you know it, right before he got his rig out of the water, he watched a fish come grab his hook. Fish on! That's a pretty one. Yeah, right to the last second. <laughs> All right, so my dad said to hurry and clean up, but I was waiting to the last second and reeling so slow and I saw the tail of it. It's like, oh, I'm gonna wait for it and I got him. Last fish. <laughs> Good job, bud. That would be another perfect sized fish for the frying pan. Well, Cade's fish that he just caught is gonna wrap up our episode today. You know, we were cleaning up because I've gotta get home for a, an appointment that we have. And so we had everything else cleaned up other than Cade in that one pole. And I was like, Cade, come on. He was at a pole or at a hole that he drilled himself and it was kind of his spot. And he'd been waiting to catch a fish over there because that was his spot. And he waited, he was reeling it up really slow and we were waiting for him and caught the last <laughs> fish. So way to go. So overall, you know, we got a half dozen fish. It wasn't super hot, but overall, you know, we still caught fish. It was just kind of, kind of the same all day long just here and there pretty pretty uh, light bites though and so we missed a handful of them but we did catch some turned out Kate's first fish of the day was the biggest probably a good three pound fish so not too bad what do you think Kate about today it was fun what do you think Nathan it was fun it's always good to get out you know even here when it's cold and stuff you kind of in the morning you think ah do I really want to do it but once you get out here you know we have fun time out here so make Tune in next week at the same time for another episode of Jared's Cut Outdoors.